Hey guys, Mitch here. I'm back at it again with another build video for you guys. This time I'm building this Yokomo ball diff for our team driver J Bar's new RevD RDX to replace the spool unit that it comes with. This ball diff allows you to freely adjust the amount of locking action your diff has, although that's not to be confused with a Rhino Racing CLSD, which is an active and variable locking diff. A ball diff can be set at one static locking amount, so you can set it as tight as you want, all the way up to basically a fully locked spool, or loosen it up all the way to pretty much an open diff, depending on your surface grip and anywhere in between. If you run a ball diff too loose on a high grip surface like asphalt or carpet, it'll actually unload all the power through the diff and it'll act like a slipping clutch and your car won't move in. I'll show you guys examples of that near the end of this video, but with all that said, let's jump into this build. First thing I've already done off camera for the sake of the length of this video is cleaned off the two thrust washers, diff rings, out drives, and the differential balls with some cleaner. These parts will usually have some oils left on them from the machining process or so they don't rust while sitting in the packaging and you don't want any of the leftover oils to disrupt the grease you use inside the diff. So this is a Yokomo ball diff designed for the YD2 but I know a lot of you MST guys run ball diffs since there isn't really a gear diff option for you and this process is pretty universal among all ball diffs. We're going to start with probably the hardest part, building the thrust bearing. The thrust bearing consists of these two washers and the smaller ball bearings. This Yokomo diff calls for eight of the balls to be used. They give you nine, so one is extra. Be sure to pay close attention to your instructions as to how many balls you need to use for your thrust bearing as different company diffs can vary. I'm going to start by sliding this O-ring on the screw as per the Yokomo instructions. and then the first washer over the bolt. And then I'm gonna take a bit of the black grease and smear some on the washer to hold the balls in place. Next, I'm gonna grab the balls with my finger that has a bit of grease on it and that'll help stick the balls to my fingers so I can get them on the thrust washer. With all those on, I'll slide the second washer on top. And I like to add some extra grease to the thrust bearing assembly before I put it in the out drive. Spin it around like this to get the grease evenly distributed. Now we're ready to start putting the actual diff assembly together. So first we're going to take a bit of the white grease and put some of that on the out drives where the diff rings will sit. This will help so there's less metal with metal contact there. Now we can take the diff rings and slip those on. Next we're going to build the main gear. We're going to take the two bearings here and we'll push one into the main gear and one into the out drive. Now we can look closely on the openings for the balls on each side of the gear. One side has bigger openings for the balls than the other. The balls will seat in the side with the bigger opening. So we'll start on that side and we'll take some of the white grease again and spread an even liberal amount into the grooves on both sides.
should look something like this once it's all greased up. Once that's greased, we can slip all the balls in and push them all the way in, again using the grease on my finger to help pick them up. Now that our main gear is ready to go, we can slip it on the outdrive. Pay attention to the instructions again as to which outdrive will go on which side of the main gear and also which side your disc screw will go into first. And then once we have both outdrives on the gear, we can put the disc screw with the thrust bearing through and then the spring and T-nut on the opposite side. Before you throw the spring in, you wanna give it a squeeze or two with a pair of pliers to wake it up so it's more consistent through the life of the diff. After that you can slide it on the diff screw. Put the T-nut on and start tightening it up. Now you don't want to just crank it down tight right off the bat or you can squeeze all the grease out or damage the plates, balls, or screws. So just gradually tighten it down check the outdrive to see if you can pull them apart and you want to stop tightening the screw right as you can't pull the outdrives away from the main gear anymore after that it's ready to install and then i'm going to go over how to break it in so i've gone ahead and installed the ball diff into jordan's rdx here i've removed the camber link on the side of the head that the disc screw is on so that I have access to tighten it during our break in here. Before we start, here's a trick to putting these out dry protectors on. Dab a bit of black grease onto the tips of the axle. Then slip one side of the protector on and fold it over to the other side and it should snap on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my driver bit in between the outdrive and the chassis so that it locks it into place. And I'm gonna go to my remote and I'm gonna trim it up on the throttle slightly to get the motor turning. You don't wanna go too fast or it'll fling all the grease out and you want that grease to stay in the diff as the balls begin to seat. So we're gonna let this run anywhere from one to four minutes and you might hear the motor's RPMs change a bit during this process. That means it's time to stop it and tighten it back up a bit. And we're gonna repeat this about four to five times before we're done with the break-in, tightening the screw about a quarter turn each interval. So right now my trim is at 86 points. And we're just gonna let this go for, again, about one to four minutes. All right, we're gonna go ahead and back the trim off and tighten the diff up again. All you have to do is hold the other wheel and then just tighten it up about a quarter turn. Stick your bed back in. And then let it run for a few minutes again. After your braking is done, the ball diff is ready to be adjusted to your liking. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how the diff performs when it's too loose. You can see the car runs, but it's just unloading all the power through the diff right now. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys what the car performs like once the diff is properly built and tightened. <laughs> See, it's putting the power down properly and it's not unloading at all. Well, I hope that helped you out, especially MST guys, since a lot of you are opting for the ball discs. Instructions can be kind of unclear and don't go over any break-in process. And some of this stuff is just stuff you either have to know already or learn from someone who already had ball diff experience like I did. Thanks to Jordan Jbars RC for letting me use his brand new RDX to film this. You can find him on Instagram. I'm hoping to make another video soon on decal and livery application once the weather starts warming up and it's body painting season again. I have more than a handful of special projects that I could use for that video, so you'll just have to tune in for the next one to see which car is up on the table next. Until then, see you guys over at Rolling Garage.